this morning to see the sunrise. Such a good feeling to know the day is mine. I've got a chance to be all that I can be. It's gonna be a good day for me. Well, hello and welcome once again to Hi. New Beginning in Christ Gospel Hour. I'm telling you what, what a program we've got today. And I'm going to say right up front, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Hallelujah. Hi, Mom. Praise God. <laughs> and we want to invite you to, to listen to the program, watch the program today. Call somebody and tell them we're on because we've got a wonderful group singing with us today, uh, the uh, Crusaders. No, I'm no, sorry, no. Diamond State Trio uh, out of Ozark, Ozark. Arkansas, and they're going to be a real treat to you. Hey, you've got some folks you want to say hello to. Well, Pedro. I already said Happy Mother's Day to Mom, but again, <laughs> and I want to say hi to my sister, Retta Williams, lives in Boonville, Mississippi. Hi, Retta. And... Uh, and I want to say a special hi to the folks at Western Sizzling, all the waitresses and the managers there. They're in Harrison, Arkansas. In Harrison, Arkansas. Yeah. We go there about almost every day. <laughs> <laughs> but we love it. Good food, good prices, and, and good service. So, hello to y'all. Praise the Lord. Now, tell me, you know something about the uh, Diamond State Trio. Of course, Diamond State is Arkansas. Right, right. And uh, tell us who... Uh, uh, well, you got Farrell uh, Freeman is the uh the president the leader and then you've got ronnie shader and then lisa freeman which is uh, farrell's wife and they're out of ozark arkansas they are excellent singers they were over here at the mountain home at the twin lakes baptist church mm -hmm. uh, on april 8th and 9th and uh, boy what a time we had and I, now they're going to be uh in june in uh, Mena. Down in uh, Mena, Arkansas. Y'all need God. to plan to bring it. You can go to the Crusaders website or you can go to Diamond State uh, Trio, Trio website yeah. or you can go to our website. We're going to put a calendar up, a uh, schedule up so you can catch these folks. They're yeah. wonderful. And you will be blessed if you attend. Now, we praise the Lord. Once again, I want to say Happy Mother's Day to every mother out there. And if today. you really want to give your mother a special gift this Mother's Day, Go to church with her today. If you can't go to a church, call your mom and say, Hey, Mom, I'm going to church for you today. That would be such a wonderful gift. Wow. Praise the Lord. Besides Easter and Christmas. Come on. Come <laughs> on. God. Well, we're going to get right to a Diamond State Trio, Trio. And you are going to be blessed. Yes, and you are. Here they come right now. I've been working so hard.
right privilege to be here in your church here in Twin Lakes. And uh, just very quickly, I want to do an introduction. Have you enjoyed the music so far? God, this is wonderful. I told someone a while ago, as soon as I walked in this building this afternoon, I could feel the presence of God stirring. Amen? Amen. And that's, that's what I come for. Amen? I'd rather be here than anywhere. Amen? Thank you, Lord, for that spirit. To my right and your left is a great friend of mine, and I would like for you to make welcome Mr. Ronnie Shader. Thank you. Again, to my right is my wonderful wife uh, of 21 years, and man, I don't know how she's done it, put up with me for 21 years. Uh, when she... She, I mean, he is. she married me. I was fairly slim, had a head of hair, and, and now things, 21 years later, has begun to slip south, you know what I'm saying, and uh, start to spread out a little, and, and uh, the roof got slick. Amen. Would you make welcome my wife, Sister Lisa Freeman? Amen. Carol Freeman, would you make me welcome and we make a Diamond State trio? This next song is He Locked the Gates. Amen. Let this song bless your heart. I'm glad He locked the gates on hell and sin behind me. Amen.
Thank you so much. This next song is called That's Why I Love Him So. Who? This old fat boy. All right. All right. Uh, I may look like a woman, but I'm not full of air. I wish I was right now. Uh, this song is called That's Why I Love Him So. And truly, I do love the Lord. Amen. Amen. I think it's good for the for God's children to laugh. Amen? Amen. Yeah. The world may think they have a good time, but we have a reason to have a good time. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We got the monopoly on it. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Let this song bless your heart. That's why I love him so as Ronnie sings it.
aren't you glad he's been faithful? Oh, man. Brother Allen, I can't even begin to scratch the surface if I could, if I had time and we could each stand and give a, just a small testimony. We'd be way into tomorrow. Amen. He's been faithful, Lord. He's been faithful. She was healed of cancer just here a while, just a few months ago. That's my God. That's why I know He's faithful. Amen. That's why I know He's faithful. This will be our lesson for tonight. He didn't throw the clay away. Oh, man. Penny, aren't you glad, honey, that he didn't throw the clay away? This old worthless, the world looked at me, and I'm just no worthless lump of clay. <laughs> but Christ seen something in me, and he put me back on the wheel time and time again to remold me. And I'm so glad that he didn't throw off the clay away. Let this song bless your heart tonight. I know you were blessed by Diamond State Trio. And I'm telling you what, these folks are wonderful. What a testimony they have. Wonderful thing I love about all of these groups that we're showing uh, to you and bringing to you uh, on a weekly basis. They all are so dedicated to the Lord. And every time they sing, they don't just come and sing, but they minister, praise God. And uh, in the coming weeks, you're going to hear a lot of testimony 
uh, about what God has done for these people. I mean, miracle after miracle after miracle. Praise God. And we believe in miracles. Hallelujah. Don't we, Sister Carolyn? Praise the Lord. And so, God's not dead, folks. The Holy Spirit is still here working, uh, carrying out the will of God, the will of Jesus Christ in this world. And I'm so glad for that. Praise the Lord. I'd hate to go through a single day without Jesus as my Lord and Savior here to guide me and do these things for me. And I, just briefly, I want to mention uh, that we're going to be down in up, I guess, in Tiptonville, Tennessee, over in uh, northwestern Tennessee, uh, beginning on the 27th of May. Uh, 27th, 28th, two services on the 29th. And on the 27th, that's a Friday night, we're having a block party. And so all you folks up in that part of Tennessee or wherever you're from, uh, come on over. We're going to have hamburgers and hot dogs and a big gospel singing that night. And uh, Keystone Church of God. Praise God. Uh, Brother uh, Pastor Blurton, the pastor there, he and his wife, And we're just going to start it off with a wonderful block party and then uh, Saturday night and Sunday have those three services for revival. And also now, we're going to be down uh, in Booger Holler, hallelujah, Sister Mary Ledford's church, six miles north of Dover, Arkansas, which is just north of Russellville, Arkansas. And you'll really enjoy it, uh, Prophet Bobby Hogan is going to be there on Wednesday night and Thursday night. And Laverne Tripp uh, from uh, TBN Trinity Broadcasting uh, is going to be there Friday night. And uh, he and Edith, and you'll just really be blessed uh, by their singing. And, of course, they'll take up a little love offering because he takes care of so many orphans and children there in India, has a school farm and everything. And what a blessing it is to go to those services down there. And it's going to be a blessing there in Tiptonville. So, praise God. Well, I want to say Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers out there. And, you know, what a wonderful privilege it is to be a mother. Uh, I, I, my mother has since passed away. And uh, I guess maybe when they're gone, you don't realize how much uh, you miss them until they really are gone. And But I want to say out there, Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers. And uh, Sister Carolyn said, you want to be a blessing to your mother today, go to church. Praise God. And speaking of churches, Church at the Well is just doing so, what a fabulous job they're doing for Jesus Christ. You go over there and you will be blessed. And they're on Salmon Lane there in Harrison, Arkansas. And yes, that's where we attend, praise God. And we're on the road quite a bit, but you go over and see Pastor Ken Crow and his wife, Melissa, and they'll treat you like somebody. I want to read this just briefly because sometimes uh, we put so little value on human life. And I think, folks, when we just stop and think about things, uh, we would not make the decisions that many people have made uh, concerning uh, doing away with an unborn child. And let me read this to you, praise God, because it's such a wonderful thing. It says that a worried woman went to her uh, gynecologist and said, Doctor, I have a serious problem and desperately need your help. My baby is not even one year old, and I'm pregnant again. I don't want kids so close together. So the doctor said, okay, what do you want me to do? And she said, I want you to end my pregnancy, and I'm counting on your help with this. The doctor thought for a while, and after some silence, he said to the lady, I think I have a better solution for your problem. It's less dangerous for you also. She smiled, thinking that the doctor was going to uh, accept her request. Then he continued, 
You see, in order for you not to have to take care of two babies at the same time, let's kill the one in your arms. This way, you could rest some before the other one is born. If we're going to kill one of them, it doesn't matter which one it is. There would be no risk for your body if you chose the one in your arms. The lady was horrified and said, No, doctor, how terrible. It's a crime to kill a child. I agree, the doctor replied. But you seem to be okay with it, so I thought that maybe that was the best solution. The doctor smiled, realizing that he had made his point. He convinced the mom that there is no difference in killing a child that's already been born and one that's still in the womb. The crime is the same. You see, this, folks, is the kind of wisdom we need today. Praise the Lord. Solomon was not the only person with wisdom. And we need that wisdom today to be able to deal with people. And let me just say this while I'm talking, praise God. No matter what you've done in this life, no matter what sin you've committed, maybe perhaps you have had an abortion. God still loves you just as much. Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you. Praise God. And let me say this to you. No matter what you've done, it's not too late to repent and ask God to forgive you. And I'm going to say this also, that when you truly go to God, when you truly repent and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, everything that you've done in the past is washed away. As far as God's concerned, nothing ever happened. It's, you're a new creation, a new creature, the scripture says. But you have been created a new in the form of Jesus Christ. All past sin is washed away. And not only washed away, but it has been cast into the sea of forgetfulness. Never to be brought up again. And the only person that's ever going to bring it up is somebody you know, somebody around you. Well, that's the devil doing his work. Don't you listen to him. You listen to what God has to say. God loves you. And I'm going to tell you something. I know lots of people who have had abortions who have come to the Lord. And I'm going to say this also. It doesn't matter what they did in the past, praise God. We love you just as much. Hey, we all make mistakes. Boy, I wish I could stand here before you and say, well, I've just led a perfect life. But I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. Sister Carolyn has made mistakes in her life. But I want to tell you that we serve a God who's able to forgive. We serve a God who is able to deliver us from worldly ways. And we serve a God who's able to put all of our past behind us we might go forward with Jesus Christ. New creation, new creatures, praise God. And I'm going to tell you today, I love the Lord so much. That's what he went to Calvary for, hallelujah. We're going to talk some on faith today because faith is such a big thing in our life because we have people who say, well, I believe. And I ask, okay, well, what do you believe? What, what is it that you believe well, you know, I, I believe what the Bible says. Oh, well, what part of the Bible are you referring to? Or what part of the Bible do you believe in? And well, yeah, I believe we're all going to be saved sometime. I said, well, do you believe the part that uh, where Jesus talked about we can have what we say? We can have healing. We can have good health. We can have prosperity. We can have all those things. And at the same time, I also mentioned to him that, listen, when you become a Christian, you're going to face adversity. But I'm going to tell you something. You're always going to come through on the other side. That's a promise that the Bible makes. It's a promise that I'm making to you today. Yes, you're going to go through some adversity. Probably maybe some like you've never had before. But what's happening in your life when you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, 
The Holy Spirit's job is to make you as much like Jesus as possible. And so when you begin to be changed from worldly ways to God's ways, there's a pulling that takes place. And you've got to choose which way you're going to go. You can stay in the world and miss out, or you can go with Jesus Christ and be blessed. Oh, what a reward we've got, folks. What a reward we have up in heaven. And we can be rewarded right here on earth today. Maybe your family's torn apart. Uh, Maybe you're worried about your children, you know. Moms, what a day. Because I think the greatest thing that can happen in a mother's life today is to know that her children are saved and secure and are going to be with them in heaven for eternity. What a wonderful gift today, as we said before. What can you give to your mother greater than to let her know that you truly trust Jesus Christ and that you're changing your life and going to be with the Lord? Are people going to laugh at you and give you a hard time? Yeah, probably. Probably. But I want to tell you something. Folks that laugh at you and give you a hard time are not your true friends. You need to get true friends that are concerned about you and eternity. Hallelujah. That's why I love to go to church because there we find people who truly love us and who truly can get together. And that's the kind of church you need to find, folks. Somebody that cares about you. Not what you did in the past. That's all washed away. And like last week we talked about, is the blood of Jesus able to cleanse or is it not? The blood can cleanse you from all things. Everything that you've ever done in your life, wash clean in the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, I just want to say this. In my heart right now, I'm feeling that there are people out there who are watching right now. Uh, You've been hurt. And you've been hurt in churches because some people just fail to realize what being a Christian is about. Being a Christian is not about bringing up your past and using it to beat you with. Being a Christian is forgiving. Just as Jesus has forgiven you, if God has has forgiven you and washed away your past, who are we to bring it up again? See, that's just the devil's crowd that brings up your past over and over. No, you've been washed free. And maybe you've been hurt in church someplace. Maybe somebody said something to you. And you know, a lot of times people say ugly things and they don't even know that they've said it. But it's enough to draw you away from going to church. And what's happening, you've allowed them to rob you of your blessings. You've allowed them to to take away the happiness that you could have, praise God, when you go to church and when you're with people who really care about you. And I'm going to say, some of you have really been hurt. And I can say that because I have experienced the same thing. I've been around some church folks that just really were cruel. And I found out that those were not my friends. Praise God. When I began to truly trust Jesus Christ and truly got filled with the Holy Spirit, truly got saved, I began to be around people who did care and who truly loved me. And that's why uh, our program, uh, our motto is, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. You can be free from bondage out there today, folks. Your past doesn't need to keep you held back, praise God. You need to just go forward with Jesus Christ. And I'm going to say this also. Be very careful about the church that you go to. If your church isn't practicing the gifts of the Holy Spirit. See, the Bible tells us that a true church service has to include the gifts of the Spirit in operation. Praise God. How many places we go where it's dead as a tomb. And if you try to encourage them at all, they just get all upset. Praise God. Well, we go to those as evangelists and we have revival. And revival means to to revive something that's there, something that should be there. And praise God, that's part of what we do. But I'm telling you today, folks, if I'm talking to you out there, if you've been hurt in church, if you've been hurt by church people, 
push it aside because let me tell you this. If a hypocrite is standing between you and God, then that hypocrite is closer to God than you are. Let me say that again. If a hypocrite is standing between you and what God wants for you, then that hypocrite's closer to God than you are. You need to push them aside and go on and do what God has called you to do, and that is come and be a part of his family. He loves you so much, he gave his son for you. Jesus willingly went to the cross and shed his blood. I want to tell you, folks, when Jesus went to the cross, the Bible says that even his own mother wouldn't recognize him because of the beating that he took. And then they took a a crown of thorns and jammed down on his head. And you know, glancing off the bone, the blood that must have come forth, the pain that he had to feel. Over in Psalms, it talks about the fact that you could literally see every bone in his body. Such was the beating that he took. You couldn't even tell if he was a man or not. He was just a mass of flesh. But you know the wonderful thing about it? Not one single bone was broken. And that's exactly what scripture had prophesied. Is the Bible true? Yes, it is. Did Jesus die for you? Yes, he did. And folks, you can have eternal life if you can just trust Jesus today. If you can just reach out and grab a hold of what he has and hold on. Don't turn loose. Hold on. Too many people get almost to the River Jordan, but they never cross it. They never come into the promised land. They never come and get what God has for them. And so, folks, I'm encouraging you today that if you can just learn to trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and walk in his promises and and what the red letters say in the Bible. Those are the words of Jesus and you need to read them and you need to put them in your heart because those are the promises and begin to receive them and accept them and say, hey, I'm not turning away. I've been down this road before. I stopped short, but this time I'm going all the way with Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you something. You call us. We'll give you the name of a good church to go to, a Bible-believing church, a church that believes that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are still working today. Folks, God is not dead. He said, I change not. I'm the same yesterday. I am the same today. And I will be the same tomorrow. Well, the same healing God that healed in the Old Testament, the same healing Jesus that heals in the New Testament, and the same Holy Spirit that's present today, praise God, is still of God and still doing what God set out to do. God does not change. How sad that some churches want to push God under the table and not hear from him for a long, long time. Sad, but true. Praise God. Well, now, having said all that, praise the Lord, let me take you to Matthew, the 18th chapter and the 18th verse. And once again, we've got a lot of uh, scripture that I just want to read to you today. I'm not going to preach at you for a long time, praise God, because I think the scripture itself speaks out. But I I truly want to talk to you about faith, praise God. And the Bible tells us that when we began to confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and began to bring forth and say the things that that Jesus said, that those things which we say shall come to pass. And the, folks, that's God's promise. Here's the God who created this everything. Now, scientists will say, well, there's evolution and there's the Big Bang Theory. And I say to them, okay, well, where did those things come from? See, I don't know. Science wants to run around and explain how God did things. Well, I don't have any difficulty with that as long as God gets the credit for doing it. Hallelujah. They say, well, we've only been around for 6,000 years. Well, the Bible says that a 1,000 years is as a day. But how long was one day back in creation? It could have been millions of years. I don't know. 
Because I accept things on faith. There are just some things you have to believe. For instance, how many of y'all can tell me what the wind looks like? Now, you can tell me the effects of the wind. You can tell me the sound that the wind makes while it's moving through trees and things. But you cannot describe the wind. But you know it's there because you see the effects of it. You hear the wind. That's what scripture is, folks. I see what scripture says. I hear what the Holy Spirit says. But I take the fact that Jesus Christ is real and the Holy Spirit is real purely on faith. Praise God. I want to move. I haven't read there. So let's move over to Mark 11 and 23. I want to start there. Praise God. Because here are instructions from Jesus Christ himself. And it talks about the prayer of faith. Hallelujah. Beginning at verse 22. And it says, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. In other words, have the faith of God. Now folks, I want to say this. Every person saved and sinner has a measure of faith. And Jesus said that measure of faith may be the size of a mustard seed. But if you begin to nourish it and you begin to work with it and you begin to fertilize it, if you will, and you begin to give it sunshine and all, it begins to grow just like you would plant a a kernel of corn out here in the field. Praise God. And you nourish it and you water it and you watch over it. And I know some folks that even sing to them, play good music, praise God. And that kernel grows up out of the ground and brings forth a harvest. That's the way faith is, folks. That little bitty piece of faith that you've got that God gave and put into you begins to grow when you nourish it, when you when you work with it, when you exercise it. And it begins to grow into a giant tree. But it's you who has to do the nourishing. You're the one who decides, what am I going to eat today? Am I going to eat of the Lord from the Lord's table? Or am I going to eat from the world's table? Whatever you put in your body, that's what your body becomes. Folks, we got people all over the world today, especially in the United States, who are dying of diseases which were virtually unknown years and years ago. And it's been brought on by the diets that we're on. It's what we're eating that's killing us. Wouldn't it be better to eat of life and begin to live instead of dying over the fats that we have in our food, over the the junk that's put into our foods to make them uh, preserve them, if you will? Folks, what a mistake we make when we put the wrong food in our body. And some of the wrong food is when people tell you, well, yeah, that all passed away. That's all gone. That's all done. That's not happening anymore. What happens is many churches don't practice the gifts of the Spirit because they don't work for them. And the reason they don't work for them is nobody has had the faith to believe that they do. Folks, the Word of God is true. And he says, if you can just believe, if you can just receive what I've said, then these things are available to you. Now let's begin to read here. Hallelujah. Once again, it says, For verily, verse 23, For verily I say unto you that whosoever, that you, praise God, shall say unto this mountain. And once again, a mountain uh, is a kingdom. What's come against you? Sickness, poverty, uh, broken marriage. Those can all be mountains in your life. But you have a right to speak to that problem And listen to what happened. If you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, or your heart, praise God, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now folks, Those are the words of Jesus Christ. And Jesus was not man that he could lie. 
Jesus never lied. Jesus, these are promises that God has set forth. If you can simply believe, and, and, and again, it starts as that little grain as a mustard seed, but you begin to add to your faith. And let me show you, show you something, folks. As you go through this Christian walk, yes, things are going to come against you. But here's the truth, and I, I promise you today, praise God, that God will bring you through it. And you will have the rewards that God has promised. Praise God. Mothers out there today, you need to be praying for your children and thanking God for their salvation. Not worrying about them, but taking them before the Lord and just saying, God, I'm, <laughs> here they are. And I'm not going to take them back. I'm going to leave them right here on this altar because I'm believing right now that my children are saved. Praise God. And don't you let the devil rob you of that because that's God's word. If you ask anything believing, God said, I will do it for you. I'll move mountains. I'll move the worries out of your life. I'll take away poverty. I'll make a way that you can prosper in the wilderness. You know, I don't worry about gas prices today. That's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to trust God for the promise that he's made to us. Hallelujah. And he will take care of me financially. He'll make the money available to buy gasoline so that I can go out to other churches. He makes money, uh, gives me money so that I can feed and not just for me to eat, but to be able to help others to eat. He doesn't just give me enough money to get by and pay the rent and, and make the house payments and things like that, but he gives me enough money to be able to reach out and help others who are homeless. Praise God. That's the God I serve. That's the God who's not just concerned about me, but he's concerned about everybody, everybody's life that I touch through Christ Jesus. And his promise is yes and amen. It's a done thing. He said, I am God. I change not. If I was doing it yesterday, I'm going to do it today. And listen, if he took care of David, if he took care of Abraham, if he took care uh, of Jesus, if he took care of Moses, if he took care of Noah and all these people, don't you think that same God is able to take care of you today? Praise God. It just requires faith. We've got to learn to believe what this Bible says. And I challenge you today, dare to believe what this scripture says. Back to Matthew 18 and 18. Notice what he says, praise God. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Listen to verse 18 once again, folks. I want you to get this. Hallelujah. Whatsoever you Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you binding poverty in your life? Praise God. Are you binding uh, the effect that the devil's having on your children and on your home? You have a right to bind the devil away from your life, away from your finances, away from your health. Praise God. You have that right. My Bible says that... Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. It's up to you to do it. You bind the devil. You loose angels to minister to you and to your family. You loose the angels to come to your children and say, God, in Jesus' name, I'm just asking now for angels to come around my children, for the Holy Spirit to come around my children. I loose them to minister unto my family. I loose them to minister to my finances. I loose them to minister to my entire life. Praise God. But especially my children. Mamas, are you hearing me out there today? Praise God. We're about out of time.
I want Sister Carolyn to come quickly because it said here once again that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. I want you to join together their hands with somebody in your home right now. And let's agree together. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I bind the devil and his demons out of the lives of those listeners who are believing with us today. I bind the devil. And right now, Lord, I loose the Holy Spirit. I loose angels to come and minister yes. to all of your children. I loose minister, ministering angels to come right now with healing for your finances, with healing for your diseases, with healing for your marriage, with healing uh, for a broken family with children who are not where they need to be. And right now we bind the devil away from them. And yes, Lord, we bind every demon in Jesus' hell. name, in Jesus' name. But we loose angels to minister to you. And I'm claiming our children in the kingdom. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. God. They're saved. They're saved. Our families They're saved. and our children. We're out of time Mother's once again, prayed. folks. Praise God. Thank you for praying with us. Thank you God for joining you. us. Thank you for watching us. Praise God. Call somebody. We'll be on again same time next week, Tuesday nights and Sunday mornings. Praise God. And remember, you, you shall know, know the, the truth. truth. And, and the, the truth, truth will make, make you free. free. Happy Mother's Day. Praise God. Bye -bye, and come see us in Booger Holler down in north of Russellville, Arkansas. Yes. Praise the Lord. God bless. God bless. Woke up this morning to see the sunrise. Such a good feeling to know the day is mine. I've got a chance to be all that I can be It's gonna be a good day for